There is a scene in the movie, not another teen movie, when the teenage male lead protagonist confesses his love and shares his feelings to the female lead protagonist at the airport. But suddenly, all of the nonsense is interrupted by a voice of reason. The voice of Molly Ringwald. Please tell me that you didn't just quote Freddie Prince Jr. She tells these young teeny bopping characters to cut the cliched crap and points out that they are just quoting iconic lines from older, better teen movies. This strong female character reveals that it's all formulaic and pathetic, advising this teen boy protagonist and the teen girl protagonist to just be true and speak from the heart, and to stop being little dumb biatches. Then she just walks away, leaving these characters with profound wisdom that only Molly Ringwald could deliver. But that wisdom is quickly misunderstood and forgotten. This sentiment is perfectly summed up in a beautiful poetic little whisper when Miss Ringwald says, Fucking teenagers. This hilarious little cameo literally reminds us that before these teen movies got formulaic, cheesy, stupid, cringy, or whatevers, they were actually kinda good. And the reason they were so good was due to the dialogue written by the late, great John Hughes and the young artist who spit out that dialogue to perfection. Young artists like Molly Ringwald. Now picture Molly Ringwald. Almost certainly she's kissing a cute boy above a birthday cake, or she's being serenaded by Ducky in the record store, or she's confronting parental problems and peer pressure in high school. Coming of age. Either way, there she is, the princess of the Brat Pack. And no matter who she wanted to be, who she felt she had to evolve into as she aged out of the John Hughes universe, she'll always be pretty in pink, stuck in time like she never left the 80s. But what happened to her career after those totally radical 80s? I don't know, let's find out. What the f happened to Molly Ringwald? But to truly understand what the fuck happened to Molly Ringwald, we must begin at the beginning of the beginning began when she was born on her birthday, 1968, California. At the age of 10, Miss Ringwald got a role in a production of Annie, and she would appear in two episodes of Different Strokes. In 1982, Molly got her first movie, an interesting spin on Shakespeare's Tempest, earning a Golden Globe nomination for New Star of the Year. The following year saw a movie called Space Hunter Adventures in the Forbidden Zone. It is a mess of a 3D sci-fi flick that Molly Ringwald hoped would be better once she got on set, but it didn't get any better. It sucked. And she also did a TV movie called Packing It In. But it was 1984 that saw the true breakout of Molly Ringwald, blowing audiences and birthday candles away with the John Hughes classic, 16 Candles. Miss Molly got Mr. Hughes's attention through a mere headshot. He just saw a picture of her and he was like, good golly, Miss Molly, I need that Molly. She was just 15 when they were filming 16 Candles and it was clear that this young actress truly had it. Molly had moxie. And yeah, 16 Candles, it's kinda like the perfect teen 80s comedy. I guess Breakfast Club is technically a better movie, but 16 Candles, it's really fun and it's really politically incorrect. Like they just do everything you're not allowed to do anymore. It's a fun, wild, relatable ride that also has a lot of heart, even though the story and the characters are kind of up, but it's up in a nice 80s way. 
And yeah, I think 16 Candles would actually kind of fall apart and be a strange mess of a movie if it wasn't for the grounded, believable, relatable, heartbreaking, heartwarming performance of Molly Ringwald. Even though I'm not a teenage girl and I never have been, and I don't plan on being one, I still look at this character and go, yeah, I get you, girl. Even though my family remembered my 16th birthday. Next, she did a TV movie with River Phoenix called Surviving the Family in Crisis. But right after that, she jumped back into the Brat Pack cinematic universe with yet another John Hughes classic, The Breakfast Club, playing the Princess Claire. And yes, she is playing a archetype, but this fantastic performance laid the groundwork for the prissy high school girl trope that was synonymous with Ringwald. But actually this shows that Molly Ringwald has range when compared to her 16 Candles character. She's just not playing the same type of teenage girl. This time she's popular, but there's more to her than just being popular, which audiences would find out by watching the movie, The Breakfast Club. She practically created this kind of character on the big screen or at least brought it into the 80s. And no one has been able to play it as well as Molly did. Once again, she's believable and relatable, even though I've never been a popular teenage girl in a library. Then in 1986, she played Andy, another teenage girl, in another script written by John Hughes, Pretty in Pink. This movie, again, was a monumental showcase for her. Once again, showing that she has depth and plays different types of teenagers. This one's a little more mysterious than her others, I think. Just another nice little teen movie from the 80s that they don't make anymore because it's not the 80s. But by that time, unfortunately, Molly Ringwald was beginning to uh, grow up age out of being a teenager and faced a John Hughes fatigue. She wanted to step away from doing just teen comedies, even turning down the film Some Kind of Wonderful. Instead, Miss Molly Ringwald would lean into dramas, like a movie called PK and the Kid. And then she would show everybody that she is truly dedicated to the art of cinema by working with master filmmaker Jean-Luc Godard. Godard. Do you pronounce the D? Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. I don't know. But yeah, in 1987, Molly Ringwald did a Jean-Luc Godard movie, King Lear. This was her going, look, I'm an actress, I'm an artist, I can do things that are more than just teen movies. I can work with a French New Wave dude, see? But of course, she also still had to do romantic comedies, like The Pickup Artist, starring fellow Brat Pack dude Robert Downey Jr. And in 1988, Molly Ringwald officially starred in her last quote-unquote teen movie, a film called Four Keeps, which she was not a fan of. Molly says that she felt the pressure of a huge responsibility to her teenage audience to make films that live up to her reputation, but she says with this film Four Keeps, she felt like she let her fans down. And then there was something called Fresh Horses reteaming with Andrew McCarthy. But then the 80s, the decade that Molly Ringwald owned, conquered, and crushed, it ended. Then came the 90s. And as Molly Ringwald entered the 90s, she was seeking out some more adult romantic comedy fare. Not like adult adult, but just like a, a more, just older, an older audience with films like Strike It Rich, Betsy's Wedding, and a TV movie called Women and Men, Stories of Seduction. But these were unfortunately misguided, especially so considering that she missed the mature shift she so desired by turning down movies like Pretty Woman and Ghost. Can you imagine if Molly Ringwald was in Pretty Woman and Ghost? she would have owned the 90s as well. She would have been Julia Roberts and Demi Moore. She would have been unstoppable. But instead, Miss Molly, she seemed stuck. The right project never came along. There was something called 
Something to Live For, where she played a real-life AIDS activist, which may have done something for her, but it seemed to be lost in the TV movie shuffle. But it did show that she had amazing dramatic chops, but nobody noticed. That same year, in 1992, she moved to France, further distancing herself from the Hollywood limelight. The mid-1990s weren't that great for Molly either. With films like Face the Music in 1993, the Stephen King adaptation The Stand, something called Baja, something called Seven Sundays, and something called Malicious, which seemed to have some potential because apparently she plays somebody with borderline personality disorder, so I'm sure she does something interesting with that. In 1996, there was Bastard Children, and a short-lived TV series called Townies. The late 1990s weren't doing her any favors either, with junk like Office Killer, the TV fantasy Twice Upon a Time, and a string of stuff from 1999 that made you say, oh hey, look, it's Molly Ringwald, like Requiem for a Murder, Teaching Mrs. Tingle, Kimberly, and Shaded Places. She would, however, return to a love of hers, the stage, in How I Learned to Drive. But I would say the best thing that Molly Ringwald did in the 1990s was a short film. This short film was called Some Folks Call It a Sling Blade. And of course, this short was so amazing that it went on to become a feature, chopping the title down to Sling Blade. But just by participating in this artsy-fartsy amazing short film shows that Molly Ringwald has a true passion for the art of cinema, even if it's short and black and white. I'm pretty goddamn insulted. Then came the 2000s, and those 2000s began similar to how the 1990s ended. She did a slasher horror movie called Cut, a forgettable romantic comedy called In the Weeds, but she did get some TV work in The Outer Limits. But then came the year 2001, and Molly Ringwald returned to the stage her true artistic passion in two productions, Tick Tick Boom and Cabaret. This was also around the same time when she had that cameo in Not Another Teen Movie. We all know where this is going. Which, as you know, is actually a fairly decent parody of teen movies. And poking fun at herself shows that she has a sense of humor and respect for the characters that she helped create so many decades ago. Then she did the Broadway thing again in Enchanted April, which she left due to her pregnancy. After a breather that lasted a few years, the year 2006 brought a pair of TV movies featuring Molly, something called The Wives He Forgot, and something called Molly, an American girl on the home front. Molly was in a movie called Molly, and again she did some more stage work in Sweet Charity, before she landed the key role of the mother of a teenager in ABC Families, The Secret Life of an American Teen. Teenager. Molly would even sing the theme song. As you know, in the 1980s, she represented the teens, but now in this show, she is representing the moms of teens, illustrating her growth. And her presence and her performance is there to remind us all that moms used to be teenagers too. And that life is a vicious, vicious cycle because teens become moms and, and it's crazy. Then Molly would release a jazz album, which of course featured a cover of Don't You Forget About Me, the ending credits song from The Breakfast Club. In 2014 and 2016, she provided voices for Rainbow Bright and Doc McStuffins, also starring in a lifetime Christmas movie, Wishin' and Hopin', which is completely up her alley at this point. Like, Molly should just totally embrace the lifetime Christmas movie thing. That same year, she launched an advice column for The Guardian, so if you need some Molly Ringwald advice, read The Guardian. Make sure it's fact-checked. In the meantime, she turned up in 2015's Jim and the Holograms and Bad Night, following those up with the true story King Cobra and a two-season run on the Canadian series Raising Expectations, along with a coming-of-age flick called SPF 18. 
Molly Ringwald again returned to a variation of what made her famous, the teen product, playing Archie's single mother in Riverdale for 26 episodes. Once again, her casting, her presence, her performance is making the point and reminding us all how the youth eventually become old. Old single mothers, the vicious circle of life, it's a beautiful thing. 2018 saw a coming-of-age movie called All the Small Moments, and then Molly Ringwald would play Keanu Reeves' wife in Siberia, while also popping up in The Kissing Booth. And from there, Molly Ringwald just kinda bounced around, playing yet again another mother, because teens become moms, in Tales of the City. But lately, like in the past few years, she's actually been landing some legitimately strong fare, like a counselor on Creepshow and an AA moderator on The Bear. She played frickin' Jeffrey Dahmer's stepmother on Netflix's Dahmer, and she was on Single Drunk Female. So yeah, Molly, she's still crushing it, yo. But no matter what kind of role Molly Ringwald moves into in her mature years, she will always be, in the simplest terms, and the most convenient of definitions, the princess of 80s cinema. So nobody should give a fuck about what the fuck happened to Molly Ringwald, because she's doing just fine. Don't you forget about her.